first book is born, you start getting people calling, calling, yeah. asking for um, keynotes, and they're asking you to speak at their company. I mean, that was immediate. Or how did you the, transition the to the company? The first big thing was is that in my company, mm. we were uh, a carrier and Bryant dealer, so manufacturing a brand of air conditioner, right? Mm. We were uh, we were a Bryant dealer manufactured by Carrier, which is kind of a household name. When we started having the success that we had, the manufacturer said, hey, we want you to train our other dealers around the country, and they had thousands of them, so I did millions of dollars of work for the manufacturer going around and training on their companies. I would go to their big dealer meetings, I would speak, and I would talk about my success, mm -hmm. and oh, by the way, here's the program I used to do it. So I started doing a ton of training, and then of course I realized very quickly, wow, this is principle apply to every business. That's right? when you start. They apply to FedEx it. and mom and pop plumbing company. It doesn't matter. The principles are the same, right? What do you see for the most part when you're working with a struggling company? I want to know struggling company, um, average company in a, in a succeeding company, but I'll mm -hmm. start with a struggling company. Like what is that common mindset? I mean, I yep. would assume it's fear or, I mean, what are you seeing from top, from ownership to bottom? Yep. What are you seeing at a company that's struggling? The biggest difficulty, I think, particularly in small business, and I don't mean super small. I mean, it can be a, a $100 million, $200 million company that's still okay. considered you know, small business. Yeah. The number one thing is that people in smaller businesses allow the least successful player in their industry mm -hmm. set the benchmark on pricing. In other words, the least successful okay. company is also gonna be probably the cheapest company, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And everybody looks at that person As. and says, oh, look where their prices are, we gotta get there. What you don't see is they're two years behind on their taxes, that they're three <laughs> months behind on their mortgage, that, that, that their family can't go to the grocery store because they're not making the money they need. And, and, and so what happens is we allow the least successful player in our, in our, in our industry set the benchmark on what people should expect for pricing. I freaking look at did big that. Business. I did that when look I started. Look at big business. Look at, at, look at the computer business. Who does everyone want to emulate? Apple. The most expensive companies. Yeah. Right? In the car business, Lexus, Mercedes, Range Rover, right? Mm -hmm. So big business, because they're more professional, they understand that you can't get distracted with what the cheap guy is doing. So the first okay. thing I do when I go into a company to do an analysis is I say, give me, I want to see the top half of your financial statement. I want to see your gross margin. That's the first, before I see expenses, Overhead, I want to see gross margin. Margin. I want to see the operating income. Are you making enough money to run your company successfully? Yeah. Right? So the fix is typically pretty easy, too. We got to raise gross margin, mm -hmm. right? Maybe mm -hmm. we got to raise prices 5%, 10%. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the market says now we have to learn to outcompete. We have to learn to go in, and that's where professional sales process comes into play. i got to show you why my company's worth a couple of extra bucks, mm -hmm. because we're going to do this, and I've got a very, very refined process to do that. I'm going to demonstrate to you why I'm worth a few extra bucks. I love that. Let me give you a perfect example. So you sell safety Safety, services, training, equipment, safety, on-site. Equipment. Or Not equipment, but just okay. training and on-site safety okay. supervision. So do you ever go into a prospective client? and they have a competitor of yours who offers training for less money. Yes. Okay, so here's what I would do before you go on the sales call or allow your salespeople to go out. Mm -hmm. Take 30 seconds and go on Google and type in things to consider when purchasing safety training. And you will find a gazillion articles really? published, by, <laughs> published by legitimate you know, reliable third-party experts. Sources, or get experts. The National that. Association of Petroleum Engineering or something, right? It'll be some big association that has written an article about things that oil companies, drilling companies, should consider when purchasing safety training. Okay. And price will never be number one on that list. Gosh, I believe that. Yeah, I, I know that. I know I it. Hear. So what's going to happen? It. There's going to be an article. It's going to list 10 things. And price will be number four, five, or six. And everyone thinks... So now, now you're an oil drilling company and you just hired me to go in and sell. I'm going to say, now, Apollonia, I know for your company you want to buy safety training, right? You're going to buy it from somebody because you got to have it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, as a responsible businesswoman, price, how much it costs, is going to be important to you. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. I, I get it completely. What I'd like to do is to share an article with you from the National Association of Petroleum Engineers, and they identified 10 things that you should consider when you're making this purchase. Don't listen to me, listen to the experts. Yeah. And the reputation of the company, proven track record, blah. Oh, look, their number price is number five on the list. 
Now, I don't know about you, Apollonia, but I was a little surprised that it was number five. I mean, let me ask you this. Do you agree or disagree with the National Association of Petroleum Engineers that there are some factors to consider when purchasing this trainer that are maybe as important, maybe even more important than a cheap price? Yeah, and they just have to agree, yeah. They have to agree. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to leverage, so Robert Cialdini, president of psychology, uh, dean of psychology at Arizona State, he's written a lot of books on persuasion and influence, right? Mm. The consistency principle, public declarations dictate future actions. Oh, whoa. You tend to take actions consistent with your words, right? Okay. Now, you just made a public declaration to me that price was not the most important. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to impact your decision 30 minutes from now when I present my pricing to you? Mm. Well, no, actually, it will. I mean... What I'm saying oh, is that in the in the in your favor, yeah. In my favor. In right. your favor. So so now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna present my training options, and I want you to tell me, hmm, you're a little more expensive than the competition, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my close. So Apollonia, I appreciate the time you took for me here with me today to kind of go over your business and all the challenges you guys are facing, and giving me the opportunity to present our training options for you and your company. Based on everything you've told me, I'm going to recommend that you go with training package B yeah. because it addresses everything you talked about in terms of the most important priorities, mm -hmm. right? So the only question I have for you now, Apollonia, is very simple. Will you trust me with these recommendations? Now, give me the price objection. Um, you're a little bit more expensive than our competitor that yeah. just came in the other day. Yeah. No, I get that completely. And sometimes doing things the proper way is not the cheapest way. But, you know, <laughs> earlier we were looking at that article from the National Association of Petroleum Engineers, and you had said that you agreed that there were some factors to consider more important than a cheap price. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you feel like that's changed at all in our time together? No, yeah. I, I still agree with that. I still agree. Okay, well, great. With your permission, let's start the paperwork. Let's sign the deal. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and when, when I do that, you're going to feel what's called cognitive dissonance. It's anxiety because you said one thing a half an hour ago that you agree with this article. Yeah. Now you're doing a 180 saying, I want a cheap price. All I have to do, because I feel like at closing, the time for argument debate's over. My only hope is to remind you of what you said. What I said. Not yeah. what I said. Yeah. Of what you said. You said it wasn't the most important. Does that change? Well, no, 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 that's changed. Just, well, I understand, but with your permission, let's start the paperwork. And so what happens then, we want our actions to be consistent. Mm -hmm. The natural state of us is not dissonance, it's resonance. We want to be in resonance. We want to be in, right, in alignment, right? So when I ask you that question, let's start the paperwork, I'm throwing you a life preserver. I'm giving you the chance to be consistent with, with your words. what like, I just said. Exactly. Yeah. And by the way, now in that sales process, I have to have shown you why I'm worth a few thousand bucks extra a year. Yeah. Right? If I haven't shown you that, this, you know, it's not You have work. to do your part you to show the value. Part. That's and, the whole yeah. process of showing you why I'm better, showing you why I'm more expensive. Right. Wow. And, and, and getting you to agree that, that that's more important than a cheap price. So, again, that's all about the sales process and, and you know, consistency selling my new book. I go through that whole process and all the tools you go you through that process step by step, step by step by step. OK. Yeah. yeah you and can, I, I just love how the fundamentals you're saying are the same, whether you're a small business, medium, large. I mean, I, I developed a, a sales training program, a whole program for FedEx, for their small business unit. Yeah. The same exact things. Wow. Because they go in. And they, you know, they will use UPS or somebody else who's a little cheaper. Mm -hmm. so they got to show why FedEx is worth a few more bucks. Okay. Yeah, same oh thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so the new book, can you tell us a little bit more about it? So yes. I know in the beginning of the book, you said it's more mind, it's a little bit of mindset and sales. So how yes. does that tell Yeah, so about it? because anytime I teach sales, I teach mindset first. So in the first okay. 60 or 70 pages of consistency selling, I do kind of a recap of my book, The Power of Consistency. The Power of Consistency is okay. the, the hardcore mindset training. I took an overview of that. And in case the reader got this, the, the third book without getting the second book, yeah. I didn't want them to be like lost, right? So I go through the basic process okay. of focus, emotional commitment, action, responsibility. It's an acronym based on fear, right? That's the mindset process. Then we go into the risk sales process, which is relationship, investigate, solve, and conclude, not close. Bring the call to a conclusion, because you may not close Either it way, the I yes want, or the no. Yes is best, but no is a perfectly acceptable answer. Okay. Right? And that's the key. And you got and you got to set those things. The whole thing is built on a, 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 a concept I call the sales hallway, mm -hmm. right? And you're walking your prospect down the sales hallway. At the other end of the hallway is a door. If you get to that door, you earn their business. You earn the trust. You earn the business. Mm -hmm. The problem is along the, ha the hallway are escape routes 
that your prospect will try to get out of because mm -hmm. they want all the information from you about your company, about your training, about your services, most importantly about the price. Yeah. And then when they get yep. the price, they want to do the most natural thing in the world, which is to get out of the hallway. <laughs> right. Yes. I want to think about it. <laughs> I so, want to think about it. So yeah. what you have to do is to anticipate the objections and they'll typically come in about three or four different categories, price. I want to think about it. I want to talk to your competition or we're currently using another service. And you'll talk about that more in depth in the book. Oh, the, totally, totally. Okay. And, 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 but I teach people how to close those doors proactively as you're walking down the hallway. Most people in sales will respond to objections when they come up at the end. Sure. It's too late. I got to bring it up in the beginning. This oh, is I prospect. You're probably thinking price is super important. Well, let's look at some information. You're probably thinking you want to talk to my competition. Let's talk, let's talk about some information. You bring it up. I you don't wait up. for them right. to slam you with and it. And I close the doors as we go down the hallway. I see. Now we get down to the end of the hallway, the doors are closed. They're not guaranteed to say yes, but they're more likely. You think about this. Here's the mo This is going to blow your mind, this concept. It's so simple. Let's say your average conversion rate in your company is 40%. You get 10 leads, you close four of them, yeah. right? This is not going to work 10 out of 10 times, okay. but it'll work once or twice on the six you're losing. You see, I don't have to teach people how to get the first four yeah. because they know how to do that. My job is to teach you how to get one or two of the six you're losing. Yes. That's all you got to do. Learn to get one or six of the opportunities you're losing. Wow. It's not rocket science. Do, uh, do you see that the most times that small companies, large companies, whatever, that sales teams, sales organizations, that they're either not getting any training or they're getting the wrong training? What is, I mean, I, or? That's a great question. I think in small business, it's mostly lack. Lack of lack training. Lack of training. They just don't have the resources for it, right? Which is why, by the way, I built an entire online training platform because it's super affordable. Small companies can't afford to have me in my day rates between 10 and 20 grand a day. Yeah. Small companies can't afford to have me in, you know, two or three days and then maybe once a month. They just can't afford it. So we have, we an have online platform as well. Yes. I teach the mindset and the sales process online, okay. do weekly coaching, right? You can ask me questions, but we have testing that go through on the online platform. Uh, in fact, your listeners slash viewers can go to weldonlong.com slash true, true, okay. right? T-R-U-E, mm -hmm. true. And go in there and sign up for a demo on the platform and they will get a complimentary, right? People say complimentary is a better word than free. I like free. Yeah. You get a free copy <laughs> of my book, Consistency Selling. Okay. Uh, just, for, just for going through the demo and just look at the platform, right? No obligation. And the platform is for who exactly? Is it just for salespeople? Is it for the managers? It's, Who's it for? Well, there's two kind of portions to it, Okay. right? There's the prosperity mindset which is for everybody in every company. It goes to the culture of the company, the sense of personal responsibility of the individuals, right? How that well, is huge. Yes, yeah. it yeah. teaches personal responsibility, how to overcome adversity personally and professionally. That's a universal message that everyone needs. Yes. So if it's not a sales organization, they might just need the mindset training. If they're sales, they might want the mindset and the sales and the ongoing coaching for their sales team. That resonates with me a lot, the mindset of portion that you just said the sense of responsibility because a lot of the times we work with oil and gas companies, construction companies, and the main issue is the owner, the manager, whatever, saying, my guys just don't care about the company. They right. don't have a sense of responsibility if they fuck mm -hmm. something up yep. with their equipment or if it's getting hurt, like yep. they just don't care right. is That's kind of what I get. That is exactly what the mindset training is designed to combat to make them more responsible, to see their responsibilities to themselves, their employer, their family, their community. I like because that. we gotta get people, listen, new information can change people's perspective, mm -hmm. right? Now you can't make them do anything, but you gotta make them want to do things. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do with the mindset, I make them want to. I share my story with them, right? Mm -hmm. And I give them hope. Most people won't go through the effort to change because they don't believe it's possible. They don't believe that that shiny new brass ring is for them. It's for the other people. Yeah. You have to convince them that, yes, it's possible. There are some simple things you have to do. Mm -hmm. And people, when I'm speaking, they'll say they, they, they kind of apologize for saying it because they think it's an insult. They'll say, man, if you can do it, anybody can do it. 
I'm like, that's not, that's, I want that's you the to message. Say that. I want you to say that. Yeah. I got 103 IQ and ninth grade education, three time convicted felon, and I went out there and built a $20 million business like that, and I've earned millions of dollars since then in writing and sales and training. Mm -hmm. If I can do it, anybody can. I have no special talents. I have no special skills. I have no special intellect. I didn't come from money. Connections and yeah. focus and hard work and simplicity. Stephen simplicity. Jobs, before he passed away, they, he was interviewed. To what, Mr. Jobs, do you attribute the success of Apple computers? You know what he said? Focus and simplicity. Oh my God. Focus on one or two things. Simplify, in other words, one or two things you got to do every single day mm -hmm. and execute, execute, execute. What happens in business, we get distracted. Oh, we could do this. Oh, we could do that. We could do this. Let's try this. Just focus. Like there's, there's a, a book called In Search of Excellence written 30, 40 years ago by a bunch of business professionals. And one of the concepts, it, the, the whole book went through and evaluated the most successful companies. Back in those days, it was Sears and AT&T and these companies, right? Mm -hmm. But one of the lessons was stick to your knitting. Stick to the fundamentals. Stick to what you know. Stick to Don't what you know, distracted. what you're good at. There's never a shortage of ideas, right? Yeah. It's, there's a shortage of, of, of execution. Here's the final thought I'll leave you with because I can tell we're just about out of time. Yep. Success is not a knowledge problem. It's an execution, an execution problem. execution problem. We all know what we need to do. We just need to do it on a consistent basis. What would be final advice that you would give somebody that's working at an oil and gas company or any company, really, and they're going through it right now, they're struggling, they're having yeah. issues in their life, yep. and because of that, they have issues all over the yep. place um, throughout their work. How you said it, mm -hmm. it affects everything. Here's so what, what would, it, how do you get somebody out of a bad mindset? The first thing I would tell them is there's a big difference between fault and responsibility. It may not be your fault that your wife cheated on you, mm -hmm. but it's your responsibility to have a healthy, productive response for your kids. Mm -hmm. It may not be your fault your mom was a drunk. It may not be your fault your dad beat you. It may not be a fault that your brother-in-law stole your money, mm -hmm. but it's your responsibility to fix it as an adult. Because what happens, we get so absorbed in whose fault it is, yes. we think it's that person's fault to fix it. Or yeah. there was, right. And listen. If your life sucks because this person, that person, this institution, that situation, yes. then the only way my life can get better is if those people all change. What's the likelihood of that? Not. But if my life sucks because of what I'm doing, I can change that instantly. Take. Better choices, better decisions, different thoughts. Okay. Right? So I think the main thing is people have to say, even though it's not your fault something happened, it's still your responsibility to make it better for yourself and your family. Oh That's my the key. gosh. Simple stuff. And then for the business owner, for really, yeah, for the business owner, somebody that's wanting to take their business to the next level, they want to get to this X amount of revenue right. and to expand their business, what would be their first simple practical advice that viewers it's could not take? Not rocket home? science. I would take my, my PL yeah. and I would take the bottom half of it and I would add up my overhead, yep. my fixed expenses. Yep. Right? And then I would look at my cost of goods mm -hmm. and see what my gross margin is. Mm -hmm. If your gross margin is 35% and your expenses are 32% of total revenue, you're fucked. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you got some problems. You have to increase the gross profit. Mm -hmm. Now we can get around to minimizing and lowering expenses later, but there's two ways to grow a business. You can either A, you can attract new customers, or B, you can extract more revenue out of your existing customers by either raising your prices or selling different goods and services. Right. Now, attracting new customers is very expensive. Yeah. You have marketing expense, you grow your company, now you need new trucks, you need more office space, you need more administrative help, whatever it is. But selling more stuff to your existing customers Current can happen like that, right? Now that might involve a small price increase. Yeah. It might simply be selling additional services to those same customers, right? But the bottom line is, if your overhead's 35%, then you need 45 to 50% gross profit. Yeah. It ain't rocket science. Yes. And you got to figure out how am I going to increase my gross margin? Can I go to my suppliers and get a better deal on materials, equipment? Maybe. Yeah. You probably can't lower your labor cost, right? Unless mm. you go to a flat rate compensation instead of hourly, something like that. Maybe you can lower your labor cost. Yeah. Those things are harder to, 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 to control. Labor costs are, you know, kind of the, the, the main expense for any company. But you got to find, either you got to raise your prices or you got to lower the cost of goods. That is so simple, so simple and it's so... It's basic it's, math. It's tactical. It's advice that somebody could take right now. Right. They could literally do this today after right. listening to this. Right. I, I will huge. say this. So I just went through this with a client that we did exactly that 
and we had a very honest discussion. They need to raise, they were underpriced. They had to raise their prices 50, 15%. Oh, wow. And they were like, well, our sales team's going to have a mutiny. They're not going to tolerate it. <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, yes, they will, because I'm going to help you implement this. So I first teach them the mindset, the sales team. I get them open to new ideas. Yes. And then I come back, oh, by the way, the company's going to have to raise their prices 15%, mm-hmm. but here's what we're going to do. For the first 90 days of that price increase, we're going to give you, the sales professional, half of the additional 15%. Your regular commissions plus half of the increase. Yeah. Now they're excited about making more commissions, right? Yeah. They got so excited about that, they forgot it. They weren't, <laughs> oh, if I'm getting half of it, let's do it, right? Yeah. So on an Getting average ten thousand dollar order, let's say they would make ten percent commission, a thousand bucks. That ten thousand dollar system just went to fifteen, but they got twenty five hundred of the increase for the first ninety days. They're behind it. They're behind it. They're behind it. Yeah, you co opt them, right? <laughs> and then at the end of ninety days, now they're used to selling at that. Commissions go back to their standard, and that's how we went from from losing money on two and a half million dollars to earning 15, 18 percent on three and three and a half million dollars. We just had to raise their prices. Now, that may not be the solution every situation. Yeah, it may be increasing the average order by selling more stuff to your existing customers. Mm -hmm. It may be by lowering equipment costs or whatever. But usually the fastest, simplest way is to slightly increase the revenue, slightly increase your Listen, go watch Marcus Lemonis on The Profit. I, right? am, I watch it every product, day. Right? And <laughs> yeah. what's the first thing he does? He goes to the company. He looks at it. We got to raise gross profits. Yes. That's it. Freaking love it. Yeah. Well, then you're incredible. Thank you. I mean, the, the knowledge that you shared today and how applicable it is, no matter who you are, whether you're an employee, whether you're a business owner, I mean, this is, this is something that I hope, if you're listening, that you are taking notes and please, please, I mean, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. I'm gonna be listening to this a couple times. I know you'll be listening to it a couple times too. Thank you for your time. I know you're a busy man. I know. Don't forget weldonlong.com/slash true. True. Get a copy of the uh, the new book free. And uh, okay, they'll go again. It'll be a demo, and they get a copy of the book. Yep. Then your newest book. Yep. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been fun. Good to see you again. Yes. All right. Thank you guys. We'll see you soon.